Welcome to the 67th episode of Throwback Hoops, and what a happy day it is. Woody V is in the house. Please follow the show on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcasts. And as always, I'm joined by my main man, Robbie Clayton. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Good to be back. I know you're in a very good mood today. Um, I was just thinking about it today. You know, we started this podcast, you know, 2021, did the season, and then the Kings won. We've done it again this year, and the Kings won. So, um, yeah, maybe you can send some love, and the Wildcats can win again next year. But <laughs> Congratulations, mate. Looking forward to chopping up with you today. I think I'm in a slightly better state this year after the championship win, the day after reco- recording the episode, the day you after. Seems to be a bit more chirpy. Week. You do. Right? Yeah. Despite the weather, it's like, it's 30, we should say the time recording, 16th of March, is about 37 degrees where we are. But yeah, you're looking and looking and sounding good, mate. So let's continue. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. So I noticed you've got the Houston Rockets team there today with some classic jerseys. So why don't you get into it and tell the audience and, and the viewers a little bit about uh what are you going to showcase today? Yeah, for sure. So look, today I know we're going to have a big focus on Aussie hoops. So I thought I'd bring a bit of an NBA theme and represent those sure. Chinese Houston Rockets team. So um, look, hanging behind me is a Vernon Maxwell Red Rockets champion jersey. Um, now, Woods, this is a guy we've pulled his card on a few occasions, haven't we? Um, Mad Max? I've always, yeah, Mad Max. I've spoken about how much I like watching him. And man, he was a scary guy. So Mad Max was drafted out of Florida by the Nuggets at pick 47 in the 1988 draft before being traded to San Antonio on draft night, went on to have a pretty solid 12-year career, um, spending time with the Spurs, Rockets, 76ers, Magic, Hornets, Kings, Sonics, and Mavs. So he certainly bounced around towards the end of his career. I can't even picture him playing for some of those teams in those jerseys, to be honest. Um, he had a number of incidents, um, including running into the stands to punch a fan in 1995, um, as well as a few arrests. Um, so that probably clouded his um, his career a little bit. Um, his accolades are, of course, he was part of the 94 and 95 Houston Rockets championship teams. Um, he actually has a career high of 51 points, Woods, in which he scored 30 points in a single quarter. So that's quite amazing, that. Um, and interestingly, currently 57, lives in Charlotte, where he reportedly rides 30 kilometres a day, as well as playing a round of golf every day. So I'd like to think he's in pretty good shape after reading that. So, um, look, I'll stand up and show you the one I'm wearing now. This might be the only one of these jerseys I've ever seen. So I'll just um, show everyone what I've got on today. So Robbie's wearing the white classic champion Mario Eli number 17. What a That's great a pretty rare one, right? Is, man. Never seen it. Never seen pretty one like it before, it? man. Apologies so. to the T-shirt underneath that's shining through. It's a very thin material in this one, but yeah, it's yeah. that old school sort of Rockets one. But yeah, you see some McKean jerseys, some Robert Horry, those sort of ones. But I don't think I've ever seen another one of these. So a little bit about Mario Welly, a guy that you know I probably haven't thought of for quite a while, to be honest. So he was drafted out of American International by the Bucks at pick 160 in the seventh round of the 1985 draft. So Woods. I can confirm that that is a real college, American International, and also that was a real draft pick. So they did have that many rounds back then. So they did, seventh yeah. round of the 1985 draft there. Um, look, very well-traveled career. He spent, spent time in Ireland. That's also true. Um, Argentina, Portugal, and the what used to be called the CBA before his time in the NBA where he played with the Sixers, Warriors, Blazers, Rockets, Spurs, and Suns. Um, so Ellie's accolades is actually a three-time NBA champ. So he was a part of those 94 and 95 Rockets teams alongside uh, Vernon Maxwell, as well as the 1999 um, championship team with the Spurs. Uh, look, post-career, he was an NBA assistant coach for 13 seasons. He's now age 59. He's working with the Rockets in a broadcaster role. So no bobbleheads to these two guys, unfortunately, Woods. I'd love to get my hands on a Mad Max one, actually. Hopefully not with him like, punching someone in the stands, but actually him firing for a long three or something like that. But, yeah, happy to sort of show these very random 90s Rockets jerseys today. Teammates with Andrew Gaze in 1999? Yeah, I believe so, right? Yeah. That was the year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the lockout year, yeah. Speaking of bobbleheads, man, I was speaking to the Sydney Sea King yesterday at the at the game, and he told me, "Tell Robbie, I've got a bobblehead of Paddy Mills, and I'm going to send it to him." Oh, nice! Shout out there to there you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'll make sure we show that on the show when that comes. That's great for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and um, look, I'm very shocked you're wearing a King's shirt to tell you, Woods. I just didn't expect that. So, yeah, why don't you tell us about the one you got on today? Yeah, I've got the limited edition uh, jersey that that has been a bit polarizing amongst fans and, and viewers of the game. So why don't you tell the audience a little bit about the jersey that I'm wearing? Yeah, sure. So Woods is wearing the Indigenous Sydney Kings number 21 Kuwait Noi jersey. 
I've got to say, Woods, um, I think that jersey's growing on me. I, I do like the colours. I like the sort of, you know, the top sort of collar bit and everything else like that. It's um, it's decent. It's just strange to see the Kings in red, I guess, but obviously that's part of the theme there. But, yeah, no, I like it. Yeah, and I was talking to some other Kings fans yesterday and they were saying, look, it's the most left-field jersey out of any Kings jersey that's been released, right? It just seems oh. odd with these colours. But I really like it, um, the Indigenous um Jersey, as you mentioned, I'm sure, and it's got the Torres Strait Islander flag as well as the Aboriginal yep. flag on it. Yeah. Um, and and shout out to Kuat Noi, right? Um, don't think I've ever seen another Kuat Noi at at Chidos Bank Jersey <laughs> at Chidos Bank Arena, but uh, just a guy that I've always liked, and and I've I've mentioned on the show before, um, up and down career at Cairns with injuries and playing time, and uh, showed a lot of promise in that rookie year, and um, as, as people have alluded to, he had potential NBA upside. But he's found a really good home this year in in, in Sydney and uh, won a championship in his first year, right, under Chase. So it's been a really good um, environment for him. And we've seen throughout this final series in the playoffs, he stepped up at different times, right, Robin? I can echo what you said there, Woods. I know you always were a fan of him when he played with the Taipans there and you were extra sort of pleased when the Kings did sign him last year. But he played a really big role, didn't he? Um, I think he had two really big games in those in that five-game series there, had some decent um, games in the semi as well. So, yeah, he was a huge part for the Kings there, no doubt. And uh, talking about random colleges, he went to Texas Christian University. I can confirm that is a college as well, Robbie. TCU. Uh, are they like the, the Frogs or some random name like that? They uh, are the uh, frog Frogs. They are the Horned yeah, Frogs. The go. Horned Frogs. The Horned yeah. Frogs. I don't know why um, I remember half of this random stuff, Woods, but there you go. Only you, man. Um, so he's South Sudanese. His father also um, represented South Sudan in, in basketball. So he was a, a, a baller himself and runs in his family. Uh, went to uh, St. Francis Xavier's College in Newcastle before going to Florida to attend high school there before, um, uh, you know, entering into, into college and then, and then coming here. But I think he's got a long uh, NBA, uh, NBL career ahead of him, um, currently yeah. only 25 years of age. Um, and, and maybe um, opportunities will arise from uh, abroad in the future. But he must be really happy to come here and, and win that championship and um, find a really nice home for him to thrive in, right? Yeah. And look, he put in the work in that NBL 1 competition, didn't he, last year? I believe he was playing in the uh, the Queensland sort of league there. Obviously got those reps in in the off-season there, and he's come back all the better for it. So, no. Full, will he be playing in NBL 1 this, this off-season? Do we know? Yeah, I haven't heard that announced yet, actually. So you wonder whether or maybe he won't now. Now he's got, I think he's, he did sign a two-year contract, I think, maybe from memory. So, um, yeah, you, you'll have to see. I'd, I'd be surprised if he did. He might sort of maybe decide to have a bit of a break and give his body a rest now. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see him go from strength to strength and build on what he did this year. So let's talk about this year. Let's start off right away. Talk about the game yesterday. I want to get your thoughts on a couple of things. First of all, let's talk about the series as a whole. What were your thoughts of it? And then specifically Game 5, Robbie. Yeah, well, look, I mean, I'm going to say, look, I was a neutral for the series. You know, that's probably kind of not true. Was I probably was. Of course was, it wasn't true. Probably was hoping the Breakers would win. Um, yeah, just, yeah, you know, I'm just being honest there. But look, obviously, you know, I didn't have an interest or any financial stake or anything else like that. So I think I said to you all along, I wanted the series to go five and I wanted there to be some good games there. And look, it didn't disappoint there. I think... Um, uh, very even games there. Obviously, the first you know two games were the the road teams winning there. Um, I felt like a lot of leads to New Zealand in some of these games that they lost as well, which we'll probably talk a little bit about. Um, I think they might have had what at least a ten point lead in the game last night. Um, no, I thought it was a pretty pretty high level um, series. Um, Thought probably Sydney got the most out of their their roster, to be honest. Um, we saw yesterday with the, the New Zealand team, I mean, they literally had two guys off the bench score and one of them got two points. Um, a couple of guys off the bench that, you know, probably um, were playing in the season that they weren't sort of playing there. So I think the Kings used their roster a little bit better there. Um, but no, I thought it was a, a really good series. You know, you can't really ask them more, can you? It goes to a game five of a championship series and it's tied at three-quarter time. So, yeah, I was pleased with how it went. And look, obviously, you know, your boys, the Kings, they really just played out that last quarter well. I think was it an 18 to four, 18 to two run. I think they might have gone on there. Um, and look, full credit to them. They're, they're back-to-back champs now. Yeah, definitely. And what a great advertisement this whole series was for basketball in the region, Australia and New Zealand included, yeah. right? The greatest ever crowd assembled um, over the course of an NBA final series in, in the history of the league, right? Um, I wanted to ask you about that, Woods. You were obviously there for those last two home games. How did that feel? Like, we've been together to some games where there's been, you know, 12, 13,000, something like that. How did it feel with the 18,000 there? And do you think that was that, that sort of six man there for the Kings? Yeah, definitely. Look, I was there last year for game three against as many. I think it's about 17,000 there and also the Lamello ball game. 
Um, yeah. But this is on the back of winning that championship last year. There's a buzz around the Harbour City about the game of basketball and the Kings in general. So yes, there have been a few bandwagon fans, but we'll take that, right? Do you know? And when you when you play all year to come first in the regular season, right, and get yeah. that home court advantage in a game five in a grand final series, that's what you play all all year for. And then you talk about, you talk about that last six minutes where I think New Zealand was up by about five or six in that last quarter. They made that run right early on, and I was really yeah. worried. But that's when that 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 sixth man, the crowd, really lifted. I was there, and the energy in the crowd was was unreal, right? And and the it came through the, the TV as well. Like that. Look, the only thing I think they maybe need to brush up on is the goaltending rule. Um, I think a lot of them were probably NBA first fans that were just shocked when you know players were allowed to get the ball off the cylinder. And that was quite funny, actually. So many, man. Like, so many people sitting next minutes. to me. I had to explain to them, look. It's not the yeah. cylinder rule, okay? In FIBA <laughs> basketball, the ball is live, right? You know, once yeah. it hits the rim, okay? In fact, anywhere in the world it is, it's only in the NBA it's that it is. NBA. In but fact, honestly, people around me were asking, yeah. Well, credit, a Wednesday night, you know, it's a, you know, a midweek sort of night. It wasn't like it was an early start there. You know, it was like a 7.45, 7.40 start or whatever it was. So full credit to everyone turning up, and it's glad to see that, you know, basketball's um, doing so well in this country. Yeah, well, they had the... Um, the day after press conferences with some of the players and, and, and the um, King's front office um, near the Opera House today. And Chris Pongrass yeah. was like, unbelievable. Like, it was a three-day turnaround. And we thought, maybe we'll get 12,000, 13,000. That would be good on a Wednesday night, right? Yeah. And, and the Kings took initiative, and they really took the prices down. So they actually dropped the price, prices of tickets by 40% in the, in the, in the oh. lesser, lesser sections, you know? In the, yeah. And in, in the gold sections, they dropped them by 20%. Right, so this really motivated people to come. That was a good initiative by the Kings, not you know, um, and and you know the, the 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 franchise in general is in a really good place now. As good as Definitely. it's been since the days of the '90s when we had the Dwayne McLeans and the Damian Keos, etc. You know, it feels like that buzz around town again, and people are making the effort to come from the city and all parts of Sydney to Olympic Park to view a spectacle. And they put on a really good show, you know, the King's Brass, right? It's not, it's a good family day out. You've been there. Besides, you know, the, no, besides no cheerleaders, I would say. Yes, that, that, that is the one thing that really does get to me. Okay, yeah. so let's, let's break down the game a little bit. I know you mm. did mention um, uh, some of the New Zealand guys, um, New Zealand playing with a short rotation there, right? Now, yeah. talk to me a little bit about a guy like Tommy Vodanovic, who's actually, you know, been in this stadium. Yeah. He knows the Kings well. He knows those rings. And he got a DNP CD yesterday. That was a bit interesting, right? I had that on my list. Look, I'll go through that and just a few other sort of notes I had for okay. this game. Go for five. It. Yeah. yeah, look, Tommy V was definitely a big one for me. Really surprised he didn't get on there. You know, there was times that they were struggling to score a little bit like that. So that did surprise me. I was even sort of wondering, look, has he got some sort of injury we don't know about? But I don't think that was the case there. Um, I was pretty surprised when we, you know, sticking with New Zealand there, how much just a non-factor repair was there. Um, look, the whole series, he, you know, when he was on the court, looked a little bit out of his depth. Um, I'm not expecting that that will impact his draft stocks there, but nevertheless, it was a bit of a bit of a surprise that he didn't stand up a little bit more. Um, in terms of some of the other takeaways from from last night's game, Woods, um, look, Angus Glover and, and the boy you're rocking his jersey off, Kawat Noy, both really came up again, didn't they? They gave a huge spark yep. off the bench. Um, we saw, look, Vasiljevic, you know. Scoreless last night and was pretty ordinary, you know, all season to be honest. And and Suarez only scoring two points. He was interesting. Suarez. He seemed to have a good game and a bad game. Um, did mention to you offline today. I don't think we'll see him back for the team. I don't think he's quite that NBL level import there. But nevertheless, he, he finishes as a champion there and did contribute, you know, in some of those games there. Um, I thought Xavier Cooks was much better. Um, I was really worried that, you know, for the Kings when Chase left him in in the third quarter with those three fouls and then with a minute left in the third, he picked up his fourth. And I was just thinking, why would you do that? If I was coaching, you know, I would have taken him out and sort of brought him on fresh to start off the fourth on three fouls. I think they dodged a little bit of a bullet there on that one, to be honest. Um, that might have been a bit of a talking point. Had New Zealand have, have came home and, and won the fourth there. Um, yeah, look, obviously New Zealand really shorting that rotation there. Barry Brown was really good. 22 of those 24 bench points. I think Rob Lowe was the only one, the other one that scored with two points there. Um, look, Brant, I wanted to touch on Jarrell Brantley there. Yep. So he had good numbers, but I noticed at least four players in that fourth quarter. I'm sure some other people, you know, listening or watching us now would have seen that too, where he was really soft going for the ball. Um, you know, whether it was off rebounds or just a loose ball there. 
four separate times there where a Kings player just seemed to want it more and got the ball and, and he didn't get it. So it was pretty disappointing to see that. Um, I'm not quite sure what his story was there. He needed to put his body on the line a bit more in such an important game. Derek Pardon was a lot better. You know, we yeah. did joke the other day that I asked you if he was actually playing in this series. You know, he's... His output was so so weak for those first four games that he came back and played well. And obviously, your boy BMW was good good all series there. But um, yeah, what were your sort of takeaways being at the game live? Yeah, look, great spectacle to start off with. And some of those things you touched on, um, I, I agree with Brantley was some of those um, inc- incidents you spoke of with Gerald Brantley um, being beaten to the ball were right next to me where I was sitting. Um, mm. Look, I think keeping some of the the core together, you could see that. Like Jordan Hunter came back, Bruce. Vasilovic, Xavier Cooks, Angus Glover. You know, sure, we did bring in a few imports, but you could see that familiarity was there. And these guys were hungry to go back to back. And, and you know, Suarez, you, you talk about him. Chase actually has come out and said he's the best defensive five in the league, right? Which is, which is arguable with Derek Pardon, his counterpart there, right? Mm-hmm. But Chase put a lot of faith in him. And, you know, when, 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 when Suarez, uh, Suarez was doing his thing, you see Jordan Hunter step up, and I know you were very impressed with the way he played throughout this series, right? Definitely, yeah. I mean, he was that one that you kind of felt happy for him last night, didn't you, Jordan Hunter? You know, he was obviously injured last season, didn't get to contribute there. But, um, yeah, he looked really sort of happy after the game, didn't he? But, yeah, I think they all sort of know their role well. Um, you know, you mentioned how much the Kings fan love Chase. You know, I think probably the rest of the country aren't quite as high on him, but there's no doubt he gets results right. He gets these guys playing for him. Um, he gets the most out of his role and his bench players there. So he's got to get some credit for that sort of stuff. I know people will focus on the negative stuff. And, look, he yep. does complain too much. Um, I'd joke to you, I'd hate to be working in a, in a restaurant if Chase Buford went there because he'd probably complain about every course and you know, they got delivered to the table there. But, no, the numbers don't lie there. He's you know, a two-time you know, championship winning coach now and he'll be, he'll be vying for a third next season. And the other takeaway, obviously, Robbie, is the two big guys, you know, in our team, Xavier Cooks, you know, and, and D. Walt, right? Yeah. You know, they really stepped up um, after having up and down series with, with injury concerns and whatnot. When the bright lights were on and they needed to get a game, a win in game five, they were able to step up with, with whatever little niggles they had. And, and, and Derek Walton was just fantastic, wasn't he? He was. I love that little shot that he does where he sort of dribbles the ball and you think he's going to drive in and he kind of just rises up, almost like he's wrong-footed there and shoots it. He seemed to be doing that all game there. And that would just be impossible to guard someone that's got that kind of move there because you, you don't know if he's going to drive on you or just pull up and shoot it there. But um, he was having a few words, I think, with Barry Brown in the, the second half there, and that seemed to fire him up a little bit there. So probably maybe not the, the right guy to fire up there. But, no, he was really good, wasn't he? Yeah, Barry Brown, never short of a word either, is he? No, or a short of a shot. <laughs> so, okay, let's... um. Let's talk about the MVP selection. I know um, mm. you you said that Angus Glover could have done an Andre Iguodala here, right? Offline, you told me. And I was thinking, Absolutely. Justin Simon, you know, in game two, if we didn't win that game two, right? Yeah. We would not be here right now when, when our guys went down, right? And, and Simon has been consistent throughout the series. So my thoughts with Justin Simon, it went to Derek Walton. Um, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, definitely no complaints. Sometimes, you know, it's the most recent game. It's in people's mind as well, and that probably was his best game, that closeout game five. Um, Would have loved to have seen Glover win that one. It just would have been a funny one to look back on in future years and seeing that, you know, finals MVP, you know, Larry Sensock medal, um, Angus Glover. And like you said, it definitely would have been very Andre Iguodala-like, you know, when he, he won that for the Golden State. Warriors all those years ago now over, you know, all the superstars they had on that team at the time. So, um, yeah, I think they got it right. I was kind of wondering as well, had New Zealand have won, who would have got it? Because I think it was pretty much, you know, agreed on that it would have, you know, the MVP, finals MVP would have gone to the winning team. So I'm guessing Barry Brown, probably, um, yep. maybe Brantley, you know, maybe BMW, I'd say maybe Barry Brown. But anyway, that's all hearsay now because the, the Kings obviously locked it up. But no, I think they got it right. I didn't see any breakdown of votes, though. Did you see that? I don't know, sometimes no, I didn't see that. Stuff, no. Didn't, didn't see, see that. that. I'm not, not sure where Larry Sensor was. I obviously mentioned he wasn't able to make it to the game. Yep. Hopefully that's not for a health reason there. We saw Drew present that, that trophy there. But no, I think they got it right. And what a resume for for Derek Walton Jr., right? His first season in the NBL, he's all NBL first team, his finals MVP, and he's a he's a champion. So yeah, great. Well, let's, let's jump into that a little bit then. Okay, let's look forward for these two teams next year, right? Mm. I know Chase Buford is hundred percent coming back. He's already talking about retooling and, and you know getting coming back and looking for a three peat here and repeat yep. what the Kings did in earlier this century, right? Yep. Um what what are we gonna do with what, what are the Kings gonna do with the imports, right? Um 
Yeah, I mean, look, the Kings have got that history of not sort of bringing imports back a lot of the time, don't they? We've sort of joked about it in the past. They, you know, you wouldn't really want to buy an import of a Kings player because they do seem to change them each year. But look, it'll be interesting to see where the Waltons, you know, value might have gone up a little bit more um, and p- potentially he might get a European contract now that the NBL won't be able to, you know, compete with that price there. Um, look, you mentioned um, Chase like Suarez. That might mean they could get him back. I don't think he'd be, a, you know, um, on a lot of money compared to some of the guys. I think Simon's very important. Yes, um, I think these sure. guys, you know, don't come around very often. I'd love to see my Wildcats get a player like him, someone that, you know, doesn't always need the ball there, but can literally guard, you know, the one to five position there. So, and I think, look, they need to lock up some of those role players there. You saw with guys like Madonovich last year, sometimes, you know, the guys potentially might get a bit of a, a pay rise and look to go to another team yep. there. So, you know, keep the guys like Glover and Noy and those guys that have been so important there. Um, look, if we're talking New Zealand, though, Woods, on their side, I think BMW, they need to they need yep. to, to lock him up first. Um, you know, you need to keep the, the 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 driver and the sort of engine of that team there. He had a great season. So I know, I think he's um, about eight teams have been rumoured to be in the running for him there. So, yeah, okay. I think New Zealand will get first crack at him. I think he does get on pretty well with, with Modi mm-hmm. there. So he needs to be the first one there. And look, we've also mentioned on previous episodes, I think the, the Breakers did have that best import trio on the NBL there. So I'd say it might be hard to bring all four of those guys back. If you're talking BMW yeah. and the three imports, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, Three plus BMW. So yep. in terms of bringing all four of them back, it might be hard, but I think they need to get at least two or three of them back, to be honest. Yeah, probably Brantley, if he doesn't get an NBA or European gig. And Pardon is the perfect player for the NBL, right? You know, yeah. what he brings to the table. So, yeah, that, that that's there. And, uh, yeah, uh, Angus Glover's one guy who's off contract now. And, and Justin Simon yeah. actually mentioned afterwards when we were having the celebrations afterwards how much he loved Sydney. So a player like mm-hmm. him, whose game doesn't actually translate to the NBA, probably... Yeah. Can can find a home for multiple years here, right? And how did you feel about seeing potentially Xavier um, uh, Xavier Cooks for the last time there? Um, I did remark on that free throw he took in the fourth quarter, which it was one of the worst free throws I've ever seen. But look, he had a great game. Um, look, I'm st- I'm still a little bit reserved on you know reserving of judgment there how he might go in the NBA. I just feel like there's a lot of guys over there that have got similar motors, similar athleticism, similar. Maybe it's the work ethic, the thing that gets him across the line there, but he has got to do he's got to improve a lot. He's a good passer out of the high post and everything as well, but he really needs to get some, you know, some work on that shot there. Cause I think with the way the NBA is going now, you can't really have someone that you can just back off so much and someone that, you know, is a bit of a liability on free throws there. But look, he's got the two year deal and it might be one of those things if it doesn't work out in the NBA, he may decide to, you know, chase the money um, in Europe. But you'd be sad to see him go, right? Very sad to see him go, but he's been such a great ambassador for the ball club and, and yeah. just an a all-round good guy. He's so likable as a person, right? <laughs> and there's a lot of King's hate going around the, the country. You mm-hmm. can't have a bad thing to say about Xavier Cooks. I think people from all over, uh, all the supporter bases around the country were really happy for him to get this opportunity. I think it's the IQ, though, that he brings to the mm-hmm. table, right? A yeah. lot of these other players have that athleticism, have that skill set he has, but that IQ he has, he's a smart, smart ball player. And he's got leadership qualities. These are some of the intangibles that that not everyone has, right? And, and he's not a young kid anymore. You yeah. know, he's obviously had the you know represented his country. He's won a couple of chips now. He's you know he's been around, been there, done that. So yeah, I think he's going to be definitely a good locker room presence. And look, I wish him all the best. So. Yeah, well, you mentioned that to get your first shot at the NBA at the age of twenty seven is very rare. Yeah. So he was almost saying if it, if it, if it doesn't happen now, it's never going to happen. So really lucky that he's got this opportunity. And let's see how it plays out. Yeah. For sure. All right, so let's move on. There was another really, really big game yesterday, all right? We had the game three in the WNBL between the Flyers and the Boomers. Yeah. Yep. And it was on at the same time as the Kings game. So firstly, I know you got to watch a little bit of both sitting at home. I got to just follow it on my phone as I was watching the Kings game live at the stadium. But shouldn't Basketball Australia talk to each other and coordinate this better so that, you know... Games can be played on. Why couldn't the game be played tonight? You know, for example. Yeah, right? yeah. it was really disappointing. I've got to say, Woods. Um, it was one of the better WNBL games I've seen all year. I actually watched the whole thing. I had it on my phone, so you know, I don't have the biggest phone in the world. So I was watching that, watching the big screen with the Kings game. But look, they literally started at the exact same time. So there was lots of ways around this. Even when they knew both games were going the distance there, they could have started the potentially started the WNBL game at six o'clock, moved the NBL game five back to eight o'clock. There was lots of different ways they could have done that. There. Um, I believe that you know the schedule. 
schedules were locked in quite a, a while ago, which makes it even worse, to be honest. You've just got to make sure. I know both leagues are conscious of the AFL Woods, and that does start tonight. So maybe that was in the back of their, their mind. NRL as well, wrap, you know. Yeah, wrap some of these things up and that. But, yeah, it was disappointing just that so many people wouldn't have got an opportunity to watch that game last night. But, um, yeah, as I said, one of the better games I've seen all season. Um I really thought the Boomers were going to win. Um, it just felt like it was one of those games that was basket for basket. And I, I kept on thinking to myself, oh, the Boomers are going to pull this out now. Um, you know, Tiffany Mitchell was just huge all game there. Um, yeah. Kayla George was really good in the first half. But in the end, it was the Flyers that won a thriller by one point. And now in the, I think it's their, their third uh, grand final in four seasons now. So, yeah, full credit to them. And I think it'll be a really good grand final series as well. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, I expected the Flyers to just pip it in three, right? It'll be nice to see them go up against Townsville. So the other series, I got to watch quite a little, quite a bit of it. Perth did put up a challenge in that second game on the back of a great game from Robbie Ryan. But yeah. uh, Townsville, Townsville have just got a lot of firepower, and they just the the, the merry-go-round, you know, just keeps going around, keeps continuing, you know, on on this run of now what fourteen consecutive games, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, fourteen right? in a row, and they just their confidence yeah. seems to be going up. So I guess just to, to let people know when these games are, would so it's a three-game series. Game one is Saturday the eighteenth. Um, game two is Wednesday the 22nd um, and the decider if required is Saturday the 25th of March. Um, I'm going to go out on the limb woods and say that they're not going to require a decider. Um, I think that Loz and the girls are going to wrap it up um, in a 2-0 sweep and basically finish the year on a 16-game win streak. That may be me being hopeful. I said at the start of the final series I really wanted Townsville to win this, but I just think the form they're in and the depth they've got at the moment, I can see them you know, taking care of business here. And just to look back at the WNBL season in general, you know, basketball is in a strong state yep. all over the country, not just the men's game, but on the back of um, the World Cup we had, right? Um, Definitely. The women's game has also had some, some of the best crowds they've ever had. So do you see the WNBL really growing and, 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 and continuing along this upward tra- trajectory over the next few years? I think so. I think there were a few sort of teething issues earlier on in the season, you know, with like, with commentary and just the, the telecast and sort of, you know, things going wrong there. But they really seem to iron that out there. Still not sure about what we've talked about with this, you know, Channel 9 um, channel they've got there that not a lot of people seem to know about. But, yeah, I'd like to probably see more games on ESPN or KO, to be honest. I'm you know, sure. a long-term yeah. Foxtel subscriber then. So, so to be able to have all those games live just on Foxtel and be able to record them and do the IQ and lots of stuff, I'd love that. That would probably let yeah. me watch more games, if I'm being honest there. But, um, yeah, look, I thought it was a great season, like you said, off the back of that um, – World Cup there and really looking forward to the final series. And later on this year, they're going to have the Asia Cup, which is also going to be in in Sydney at, at Kudos Bank Arena and the, the, yep. the neighbouring um, stadium, right? So we should potentially go out and support it, Robbie, and watch a few games and to all our listeners. 100%. You should yeah, I'll be up for that for sure. Definitely. Right, awesome. So, Robbie, as the, the major professional basketball uh, season comes to an end in Australia... What we have now on the horizon is the start of the NBL one season, right? And I know you're really excited about this. You're going to be calling your first game this Saturday night, I think it is, right? Yeah. Saturday night, yeah. So, look, I should mention, so obviously the um, NBL one East was the first of the competitions to start. That started last weekend. Um, it's looking like a really good season for the NBL one. So they've added four new teams. Um, a lot of um, good players coming, a lot of NBL players we've seen sort of come over. Um so basically, yeah, I'm doing the first um, game of the season on Saturday where the Hills Hornets take on the Sydney Comets. Um, so there's some big names in those Comets teams, Wood. So they've got two of your Kings boys in Archie Woodhill and Iggy Mitchell. Um, so interested to see if they do play on Saturday. I know they'll be celebrating a bit. We certainly seem to see Archie um, Woodhill the whole time when you see him. He had his, his jersey sort of last night and that. But I don't see any reason why they wouldn't play, right? They obviously, you know, they Is might. Is there any injury bit... concerns for one of those two? I don't believe so. No, I don't believe. Okay. I, don't, I don't think mm-hmm. Mitchell was actually, they were actually made the finals roster. They were kind of there as those, you know, squad members that are allowed to play at home. But they'll be there. And obviously with the comments there, Shyla Hill recently signed with them. So obviously we won't be seeing her this weekend. But, um, you know, a favourite of ours in Vanessa Panousis. Um, yep. Plays for the comments there, coached by Shelley Gorman as well. Um, so, yeah, really looking forward to sort of see that there. So, um, as I mentioned, um, Vanessa Panousis would. So, she, in that first game last week for the comments, she had a, just a lazy 35 points, five rebounds, and six assists there. So, 
great debut there. She obviously was with Sutherland last year. And I believe that's her junior team there, the comments. Um, so maybe while I'm talking NBL One East, um, as I mentioned, it started last week, Woods. Um, yep. Probably a shout out to the two players of the week there. So James Tui from Canberra, who had 32 points, including eight three-pointers. Um, in the women's competition, um, Ashley Hammond from Albury was really impressive there with um, 28 and nine boards there. So say so she probably just edged out Panousis with that NBL One player of the week there. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to that. Um, in terms of my hills team there they went one and one last yep. week the women lost the men um women won the men lost um they played the inner west bulls so i wanted to do a big shout out to two mates of ours in matt mcquade and mookie skirelli who basically did a great job as they always do calling those games last week so i messaged mookie after that said look great great job there and was getting a bit of info on some of the, the guys in that game there but um Look, I'm not always going to talk about NBL One East, even though it's the one I cover there. But in terms of the other leagues there, Woods, so um, the NBL One North starts on the 24th. NBL One Central starts on the 25th of March, obviously. NBL One West on the 31st of March. And lastly, the NBL One South on the 1st of April. So NBL One East is the only one that will be going this, this weekend. So really recommend people to watch that. The NBL One app is really good. You can go on there and just hit watch live. One thing I would recommend, the games seem to default to mute for some very strange reason. So if you're, you're tuning in, you want to see that Hills versus Sydney Comets game, unmute it there and you'll be able to hear me you know, waffling on about what's going on in the game and stuff there. But, yeah, really looking forward to call it and can't wait to, to get back out there. Robbie, really good friend of the show and a good friend of ours, Jacinta Govind, a.k.a. Squin, a.k.a. Squinderella, has been telling me that uh, there's going to be an NBL1 East podcast dropping, which he's going to be hosting, yeah. and that you're going to be a regular on the show. So that's that's pretty yeah, exciting, yeah. man, right? Looking forward to that. So I believe she sort of started us off with her fellow commentator for the um, Central Coast in uh, Lockie there. So the two of them are going to be hosting it each week. And uh, I'm definitely going to be jumping on there. I've got to reach out to Jacinta and find out a few details there. But, um, yeah, it's going to be great. I believe we're going to be getting some you know, some, some guests each week, some of those people that feature in the NBL One East, and just trying to really promote this um, this great competition we've got in our state. Um, as I said, well, it's four new teams in the competition this year, so it's looking, um, looking bigger better than ever yeah we just got to beat hornsby right got to beat hornsby and i've got to say obviously me being the big lauren nicholson fan that i am sutherland are playing at hills this year so i've already reached out to her and we've had a bit of a laugh about that but i've promised her i'm going to make the trek out to sutherland when hills play them there and sure, i'm not quite sure what i'll do there whether i'm going to rock my nicholson jersey but then still kind of cheer on hills i don't want to get in trouble or anything like no that no nah, you got to cheer on hills man i'll come with you on yeah. that ride man i'll come uh, with you cool. on that trip all right that's good look forward to it yeah all right man um been been a great show. Um, really enjoyed chopping it up with you. Obviously, um, m- more of our focus is going to turn to the NBA now on the back of, um, yeah. as I said, the Australian basketball uh, season coming to an end. And obviously, we'll still give our NBL one updates. You will anyway. So um, yeah, so looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, let's let's do it. I've got classic packs back again for another edition, and I've got the inaugural Guy Box edition today. Right. Nice. And a good way to sort of finish out the show, obviously, you know, we haven't been a lot of NBA content. Like you said, there'll be more certainly from next week. And yep. this is a really popular pack, isn't it? I know a lot of people sort of really like this Skybox set there. So what did you say? It was a Series 2, was it? Or? It is the Series 2, yes. Series 2. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was looking forward to it. So I believe this has the Dream Team cards and stuff in this one. So let's do it. Okay. Starting off with a New York Knicks checklist. Hmm. What do we do with that? Oh, it's going. Yeah, get rid of it. And who, who are we paying homage to there, Woods, for those that think you're crazy? Doing Lee Ellis, that one was for you. So for all the people that can't see and are listening, I just ripped up the checklist card. Okay, we, we have got the X-Man, okay? One of my favorite players of all time. Wichita I'm talking State's about finest, right? Wichita Alan State's of, finest. Richard Kelly, yep. Yeah, yes. None other than Xavier McDaniel. Xavier McDaniel. And look at those cards. Look at the artwork. And I show us the back of those. What have we got? Another picture on the back as well. Oh, a nice big photo there. Yeah, the X Man. No, he was a good player to watch, wasn't he? New York Knicks head coach in that 1990 season. I'm talking about. And then then moved into a, working for NBA TV and on Game Time after. And you know, you'll see him pop up from time to time. Blank on that one. Um, too early for Van Gundy, isn't it? Um, Stu Jackson. Of course, Stu Jackson, yeah, of course. Shout out to Stu who will be listening to this as well, right? Okay, 
in J West has banged this in the club. This guy's name is dropped when he's rapping, right? And uh, went to college with Hakeem Olajuwon, only to be reunited with him at the very end of his career. I'm talking well, about. I know they do shout out Sean Connery on that track, but I think we're referring to Clyde Drexler on this one. Clyde right? Drexler, yeah. That's a, nice, that's a nice looking card. Yeah. Liking that old old school Blazers jersey as well there. You have showcased this guy's jersey on the show. Speaking of New Zealand breakers, I don't think they've ever recruited a bigger head case than his son. Oof. I'm talking about one of your talking favorite players of all time. G Money, number 41, Glenn Ross. Glenn Rice. Look at that picture, perfect shooting style as well. I read something today, actually. They were saying how Glenn Rice and Alan Houston, how their games would really translate to the, the modern sure. NBA, and I think they're, they're definitely spot on with that. Love That's a nice card, Woods. I'll have to grab that one from you next time we catch up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you, you got it, man. Okay, 1992 Dream Team head coach. Okay. Rest in I'm peace. talking about rest in peace. Chuck Daly. Chuck Daly. He was a great players coach, wasn't he? There, yep. I, you know, all the players absolutely loved playing for that guy. There, it used to. Any time they had him mic'd up, I always enjoyed listening to it. There, he had some great things to say. But no, he was a, he was a legend in the coaching world. There, Chuck. Interesting thing about Chuck Daly was he was Isaiah Thomas's. Isaiah Thomas was his guy, but then obviously mm. with the '92 Dream Team and Isaiah Thomas being left off that team controversially, as we all know. Yeah. He developed such a great friendship with Michael Jordan, playing golf with him. They became the best of buds. So I yeah. wonder how that affected, because Isaiah retired from the professional game soon after that, around that time. Mm. I wonder what their relationship was like post that. That's something that I've never been able to get an answer to from anyone. It would have been right? interesting to be a fly on the wall and see how that was, right? Yep, exactly. And when you talk about those, those, those Detroit Pistons teams, okay, Chuck Daly coached this guy, all right? Pro, I've, I've given this clue before. I'm pretty sure we've pulled this card many times. I do, Miles. The dirtiest player ever. Ah. Oh. Oh, Beastie Boys, Bill Lambier, right? Bill Lambier, exactly. Well, look, look who he's guarding there, the, the Virgin himself. <laughs> the Virgin. Mason Green, yep. yeah. And look at those oh. shorts they're both rocking. Look how much leg they're showing their woods above their knee there. It shows you yeah. how the game's changed. But he was, um, he was a pretty almost like forgotten about player. Everyone focused on how dirty Lambier was. He did, a, you know, he was pretty decent. He actually developed a bit of a three-point shot towards the end of his career too. So his game would have translated as well, for sure. So we pulled this guy's card. He's from the Dallas Mavericks, I think a couple of weeks ago, maybe even last week. Um, he died recently. Um, he was, had a great college career. Uh, he was only 50 years old when he passed away in 2015. He is a, he was a six foot 11 power forward center. Started off number his, four. Yeah, number 42. He was on that team with Derek Harper and, and Fat Lever and stuff were on that team. And maybe Randy White was on that team, potentially. Mm. Go on, Blake, on that. Uh, unbelievable college career at Michigan. Come on. I'm only thinking Roy Tarpley, but it's not. Roy no. Tarpley. Oh, it is Roy Tarpley. Okay, yes. nice. Yeah. Yeah. nice. Yeah, geez. Obviously, his career was really impacted by drugs there. But yeah, he had a lot of talent, didn't he? Yep, yep. Um, Cavs, sharpshooter, okay, then had a championship with the Spurs later on in the early 2000s before moving into various front it office could. roles, no, before moving into various front office roles, he was a forward, he was actually a stretch for four, man, this guy was six foot ten, could really shoot the basketball well, um, played with Craig Elo and Doherty and Price, um, he was, a, I think he was a... He was a rookie in the 80... I think he was drafted in 88-89, missed his first season before playing in the 1990 season. Oh, Danny Ferry. Danny Ferry. And, of course, he got sort of run out of the league after a few sort of racial sort of comments yes. came out when he was actually without Hawks there. So yes, yes, he did. I haven't heard his name for a while after that. Okay, we pulled, pulled this guy's card last week as well. Um, great centre on the Portland Trail Blazers. Rest in peace to none of the Duckworth. Men. Kevin at Duckworth. Big duck. And I, I know I always ask you how much he weighs. What's it got him listed on that card? 280 and 7 foot. It was 270 on the, on the previous yeah, it's one. Going yeah, up each year, I think. Yep. Okay, so this guy's game would have also translated so well to today, right? 
And when we were talking to Lee on, on our show and we went through all these different Ellis's that had played in the league, he'd forgotten to mention this guy and I corrected him and he goes, of course. So for, for, for listeners to our show, of our show, uh, loyal listeners, you'll remember this incident when he was, Lee Ellis was, um, you know, naming all the various different Ellis's that had played in the NBA and he missed this one. Oh, Dale. Dale Ellis. And he would have, yeah. his game would have been great in today's He, he could really fill it up, couldn't he? Oh, Dale hell yeah. Inside and out there, yeah. Okay, I just spoke about Roy Tarpley's teammate, right? Um, I've been wanting to pull one of his cards for ages. Underrated player, you know. Um, could do a little bit of everything, you know, a bit of a Swiss Army knife. He was a guard, but obviously he could um, he could defend at a high level. And, and uh, Orlando Blackman? No. Nah. Oh, Derek Harper? No, nah, the other one. Um, Randy White? At Lever. Oh, at Lever, yeah. Lever. at Lever. Funny, yeah, Lafayette. I always just picture him more with Denver and for some reason yep. than with Dallas there. But, yeah, no, nah, he was a really good player, wasn't he? He used to get triple doubles back in the day as well when yep. there wasn't a lot of sort of shorter guys getting those. Really good friend of Magic Johnson. Okay, this guy was a beast. NBA All-Star, six foot six forward from the Pistons. Okay. Left, obviously. I think he ended up going to oh, Dallas. Mark Aguirre. Yeah, he left for Dallas, didn't he? Yeah, I think he was in the trade for Adrian Dantley, I think, to go yep, there. But yep. yeah, no, he was a he was a good scorer as well. A little bit undersized, like you said, for his position. But yeah, he looked he was sort of one of those players you'd almost see him up in the NBL there, you know, probably a little yep. bit too short, but he carved out a good career, didn't he, in the yeah. NBA? Magic always speaks about his great friendship yeah. with Mark Aguirre as well. Yeah. Okay, now we've got him. We've, he was on another card earlier in this pack. Okay. The Jerry Curl King. Okay. The Iron Man. The Virgin. I see, I see. Do we know what his actual first name was, Woods? I'm going to Google that because, like, it can't be AC, can it? We reckon AC Green. Um, yeah, nickname Iron Man, AC Green. No, it just says AC Green Jr. So perhaps that was his name there, but interesting, one, isn't it? Hold on. Let me see if I can find something on it. Yeah. Yeah, I can't see anything standing out there, there, but. Oh, here we go. Green was given the initials AC, like his father, AC Green. The initials stand for his father's father's mother's and mother, Amanda, and his father's father, Chester. There you go. He was named after Amanda and Chester. So they obviously didn't want to give him Amanda because that might not have um, yeah. matched his, his, um, his, him there. But, yeah, AC Green, there you go. Learned something there. Okay, we've got final card, Utah, J- uh, Utah Jazz guard, uh, role player, um, played with Stockton and Malone, number 35. 35. Not Jeff Malone. Daryl Griffith. Oh, Daryl Griffith, yeah, of course. Not a bad pack. Still like those cards, though. They still look oh, good in this day and age, don't they? Beautiful, man. Really, really beautiful the artwork. Yeah. All right, man. Well, it's been a great show. Um... Hey, well done on getting through it, Woods. You know, when I spoke to you this morning, I've got to say, I've spoke to you about maybe about 10 o'clock. You were sounding a little bit dusty. Then I thought, oh, we're recording a bit later in the day. Hopefully he's all right. But you've come through it, you've come through it perfectly. So you possibly could have gone a little bit harder last night, right? <laughs> we've got a game coming up in what, an hour, bro? We do. Yeah, we've got our social, social game coming up very soon. So I'm going to smash a full pizza and then try and try and see if I can run up and down the courts. So that'll be interesting. But no, I enjoyed doing the show again, mate. Yep, yep. Um... And why don't you tell the audience a little bit about where we can be found and followed and all that jazz you normally, normally Absolutely. Let us so know about. Yeah. Look on um on Twitter we're at throwbacks hoops. Um Instagram we're throwback.hoops and of course our email address is throwbackhoopspodcast at gmail.com. Um take it away. Your shout outs there, Woods. Yeah, thanks for everyone who jumps on Patreon and pledges their support to us. You don't have to, but we really appreciate it. There are obviously costs associated with maintaining the show. And for all of you that have have, uh, have done that over the over the last couple of years, we, we can't thank you enough. Hey, Woods, I know I'm always a little bit coy about some of these future guests that we've got coming up, but I'm going to drop some names today. Do so it, man. Do it. Do it. In the next month or so, um, we're going to have Jack Heverin from ESPN coming on. Um, we're going to have WNBL and NBL One superstar Vanessa Panousis coming on. And I've teased this a little bit there. I've got to get back in touch with him, but um, been reaching out to none other than Wayne McDaniel. NBL absolute legend from back in the 90s there. So he's going to also come on in the show. So, yeah, don't think just because the NBL season's finished that we're going to sort of, you know, drop our game here. We've got some great guests coming on. We'll certainly be a little bit more NBA-focused. And maybe we can yep. also touch base on a little bit of the NCAA tournament as well Woods, and give some updates with, you know, some of the teams like St. Mary's as well that I know we've got a lot of love for. Yeah, March Madness starts tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, looking yep. forward to it.
All right. Any final thoughts? No, look, I'll, I'll say with a heavy heart, congratulations on the Kings. Um, you know, back to back. It'd be interesting to see if they can match that early Nordies team there and get the three-peat. Obviously, my Wildcats have never managed the three-peat there, but look, you're still still quite a way behind the Wildcats in terms of chips there. But well done again. Um, yeah, it was a really great year. And get out and support NBL1. For sure, for sure. And, and from Robbie and I and, and the team, the throwback hoops, be fun.